A beautiful Wednesday to you. Thank you for joining in. As always, this is the Women's Series. Over here, we capture developments and stories that impact women. Now, for the past three weeks, we've been considering the STEM field, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and I'm trying to identify opportunities for women in this field. We've looked at science where we talked about health is wealth, we've talked about technology, tried to identify some um, opportunities across the value chain, and of course, engineering. Now, if you've missed out on all these episodes, you can catch up on the channel. Now, anyway, today we're looking at the last, but definitely not the least part of the STEM field, which of course is mathematics. And the topic for today is career awareness for women in mathematics. My guest today is Karen Enuma, a graduate student of applied financial mathematics at the Wrocław University of Science and Technology. Hello, Karen. Thank you for joining us today. It's great to be speaking with you. Hello, Ayo. Uh, yeah, it's, it's nice to be here. How are you and how is Poland? Yeah, I'm doing well. Poland is fine. Uh, how is the weather? The weather is fine. We are now in the summer. Uh, cold is gone and yeah, everything is going well. That's good. And our studies? We're actually on the three months summer break, so yeah. Ah, very well. That's good. Um, very interesting. I found out that you were the overall graduate, best graduating student of your set back then in 2018 from the Lagos State University, which of course is groundbreaking. I mean, how were you able to go through all of those places? I mean, we should even start from the beginning. Mathematics have been regarded as one of the toughest subjects in high school. Now, where did your interest and love for mathematics stem from? How did it go? Where exactly did it start from? Let's start from there. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I wouldn't say there was a point where I just uh, started becoming interested in math. Um, I believe it just happened. Um, for me, uh, it was something I was good at. And the thing about being good at something is you want to, to pursue it further. So after my secondary education, I, I decided to study math at tertiary level. I didn't really give much thought into it. Just I liked math. I was good at it, and I, what better course to study than than the mathematics? Mm, very interesting. I mean, as opposed to the usual um, things that operate in Nigerian university, I don't know. I think so. But what happens most times is that you're being given some particular courses to study. In your own case, I think you just mentioned that you you chose mathematics. I mean, why is that? You could have probably gone for another science course, the fact that you were good in mathematics. But then again, you could have gone into another course. Why did you develop so much interest to study further in university, to study mathematics? Yeah, I think I always get that question about uh, if I was actually given math to, to study or I actually chose to study math by, by myself. And surprisingly, I always say, yes, this is what I actually wanted to do as surprising as, as it may be. Uh, like I remember back then in uni, the people who actually were in the mass department were probably people who came to study computer science, but we are not able to meet up with the cut off or things like that. And they ended up in the mass department. Uh, sometimes it was actually people who did not get the actual course of study and they end up pushing everyone to study math. So, there were just quite a few people who were actually there because that's what they wanted to do. And for me, actually, I wouldn't have studied any other uh, mass-related course per se. You were because, that good. Because there were two things I actually wanted to study, and that was either mathematics or fashion design. <laughs> Oh, wow. as, as crazy as that may sound. And at the time I got admitted to study mathematics at Lagos State University, I also got admitted to study fashion design in Yaba College of Technology, hmm. to, which I had to reject the later option to, to go for mathematics. So which, which just points me to the fact that for me, I just want to study what I am actually interested in, hmm. and as opposed to studying a course that will be fetch me so much money in the future. And funny enough, even math can actually fetch you as much money as other courses can. Yes, but the most important thing is that you should do something that you are interested. 
And also, I feel like so many talents can be saved if parents will allow their children to move in the in the in the direction of their children's interests academically, as opposed to studying courses that like will make sure that they are financially stable. I think you've highlighted one very key point, which is the area of interest. Um, I'm going to cut yeah. you on that. But then again, how did you, how were you able to develop interest? Because let me share my personal experience. My dad tried for me when it comes to mathematics. I had different lesson teachers. I think I always had lesson teachers right from my primary school up to my secondary school level. Up till I finished, till I even wrote work, I had mathematics. And this was just for him to develop, to try to encourage me to taking up and, um, and enjoy the subject, but it wasn't still there. I mean, how do you now start developing interest in mathematics? If, there's, like, if you had some strategies you used, I mean, I'm sure some girls would be interested in knowing that. Hmm, well, what strategy did I use? I think that actually people are different and we need to acknowledge the fact that people are actually different. And just because, uh, Okay, I come from a family of two uh, kids, uh, my elder sister and I. My elder sister has no interest in mathematics. We had the same, we attended the same schools, had the same upbringing, had the same lesson teachers, but she just had no interest in maths. And so that just points to you that people are different. And uh, in, just because somebody's area of interest is not mathematics does not mean that they can't do other things. So that's that's how I feel about it. People's interest lies in different places. And just having a lesson teacher and doing so much by your parents might not actually make you develop that interest. And so at that point, your parents need to realize that this is not something you're interested in and actually find out what you're actually interested in and push you in that direction. I think that uh, should be able to solve that problem. Right. Way beyond interest. I'm sorry I'm really emphasizing on this. Way beyond interest, there is also the part where it is one of the most, it is one of the compulsory su uh, subjects in high school. If you do not pass mathematics, you're probably not getting admission into university. So you have to do everything possible to, to pass. Even if as low as C6, you have to do everything possible. And that's why I'm still asking if there was any strategy you used that can probably people start can start keying into this this strategy that might work for okay. them. Let me see. Since you said assize interest. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah, because at some point actually, like when you're referring to having to pass YEC and yeah. and whatnot, it will surprise you to know that the first time I took YEC, which was in SS2. I actually did not make mathematics <laughs> and for that math to yeah you're right when you say we're beyond interest mm -hmm. uh because i was actually interested interested in the subject but i passed all of that courses mm -hmm. but i i didn't pass maths and for that math and i i was i was surprised also myself so that actually brings me back to the fact that yet yeah, some yes yeah, sometimes mathematics as a subject can be somehow technical well, that doesn't mean it is difficult beyond redemption. Um, I also feel like sometimes people are scared of things that they don't understand, mm. you know? And yeah. so uh, looking at the subject math, for example, is a kind of a, a subject that you build upon acquired knowledge, you build on previous knowledge. So uh, I think also we need to pay attention to like the fundamental uh, any foundational years of our kids in primary school because if they do not have a firm foundation in primary school mm -hmm. trust me there will be nothing to build on when they get to secondary school and the funny thing is no parent want their children to be held back because of a course or because of a certain subject and so they just keep pushing their kids not minding whether these kids have a good foundation in maths or not and at the end of the day the kids hate it because their foundation is non-existent even. So I think that another thing is we need to pay more attention to the foundational years of our kids in maths. We need to pay attention to primary school because if they don't understand basic concepts in maths, trust me, it's going to be difficult forever. And that's when we have these things of maths being difficult because there's nothing to build on, no previous think, knowledge. Yeah. I, 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 I want to agree. I want to agree with you on that. Ah, yeah, that's yeah. that's a good that's a good strategy. The foundation. The foundation has to be really, really solid if you want to move ahead 
Um, so let's now start talking about the opportunities, which of course you highlighted the other time when you said that people can also make money from from mathematics. Women in STEM, especially in mathematics, have been considered as the least profession a woman can take, possibly due to the difficulty attributed to calculations. I mean, why do you think women are not taking up interest in this field? I mean, we've talked about their early years. Let's now start talking about when people are very much matured. Uh, 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 there are so many reasons, but firstly, the major one should be the gender-based stereotype that is surrounding STEM itself. Mm -hmm. And long, for example, mathematics, in, Thing that the girls are made to believe that uh, it's just meant for boys. I think everything always starts from the foundational years. So we can't talk about women without talking about girls. Mm -hmm. So girls are made to believe that uh, this is for boys. I personally, when I was younger, I used to believe that leave the calculations for boys, mathematics for boys. But then again, I like competition and I like to compete with the boys. I think that is probably what pushed me in this direction. Uh, I didn't want to let them have it in code, so, which is actually the right thing to do because mathematics is for everyone, not just for men. Or so. And so if we can train our girls to actually probably believe in themselves and believe in their abilities and, and see that they can actually flourish in a male-dominated space, then that could go a long way. Also, there's also the traits-based stereotype where uh, people say that, no, mathematics is for geniuses, but actually not true. Uh, although this, because when you make these kids think that they need to be extra intelligent to understand math, then they lose interest because sometimes they feel like they're not all that intelligent. So if we can throw this trade-based stereotype out the window and let people say that you you don't have to be a genius to know math, you don't have to be a genius to, to be in STEM, then I think this can also help. Uh, it's caused across both genders too, but mostly I think girls are mostly affected because how many girls will actually see themselves to be smart or intelligent? Probably if you ask a girl to describe herself, the first word she would probably say is beautiful, <laughs> but not smart, not intelligent. So, so it, it actually really affects uh, girls. So I think the foundational years is so important because it's, that is what affects that's the later years. That's, that's the start. Yeah, that's the starting point. So yeah. train our girls to be confident in themselves. That will help. Very well yeah. said. Very well said. Right. How about how about we start identifying opportunities for women in this in this um, field? Because the only stereotypic opportunity, or I can point out, is majorly teaching. What are other opportunities across? I mean, in this value chain, aside from teaching? Yeah, that's a good question. Also, I I also used to ask that question myself <laughs> when I, I got into the university because because for me, although. I wasn't so interested in money making. <laughs> I also wanted to do something I was interested in, but I didn't realize that this was probably the best decision I could have made for myself, you know, to study mathematics because there's so many opportunities uh, in math. I, even back in Nigeria, I used to get asked a lot of times this question, but when I moved to Europe, everything changed. Like it's in Europe, for example, people who study mathematics are highly regarded and they have many opportunities available to them. And I'm sure it's so even back in Nigeria. As a mathematician, you can be a data analyst. Mm -hmm. You can be a data scientist. You can be an investment analyst, a research analyst, mm -hmm. financial analyst. In fact, anything that has to do with analysis, you can be as a mathematician. You can do as a mathematician because part of your training as a mathematician is to have like, very good analytical skills, which is what everyone is looking for in the, in the industry. Mm. And also you can be a programmer. If, if tech is something you like, you can be a programmer in using Python or any programming language that you like. Um, what else? You can be a front-end developer if you're still interested in tech. You can be a front-end developer, a back-end developer, whatever you want to, to do in tech. So I think I would look at two major areas tech and finance mm. like aside from nigeria even like in other parts of the world in europe it is like a big market tech and finance and mostly what they look for is 
the basic most basic requirement is to have a bachelor's degree in mathematics or a mathematics related field it is just i was surprised too when i you know discovered it to be like this i used to have these doubts myself but being here and seeing right now i work as a data analyst in an investment bank and i am still you know undergoing my master's degree but i'm working on my bachelor's degree so i think that that speaks for itself that there are so many opportunities uh, to in mathematics and let's not also forget teaching teaching is actually a good profession yeah, especially for people who are passionate about it it's a good because profession. there's no i was trained as no a teacher better. it's a good profession yeah yeah, there's no better gift a student can get than a teacher who is passionate about what he teaches. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is not the only career pathway. If you know that teaching is not for you, there are so many others. Data analysis, investment analysis, research. I used to work as a research analyst before leaving Nigeria mm -hmm. to, to, to Poland. So, but the, the, I think the only problem is, um, just like in any field, for you to work in any industry, you need to have additional knowledge and skills. Yeah. And that cuts across every course. So just because I'm not saying that you just having a bachelor's degree in mathematics will automatically make you a data analyst. No, because you still need like you still need other skills that you can actually learn on your own. It's just like also being a teacher. Just because you're a graduate of math does not make you a teacher. You yeah. still have to know how to impart knowledge to be actually called an educator and a teacher. So it's still the same thing in in, in other areas. To be a data analyst, for example, you must have a knowledge of database, uh, database languages. You must have a knowledge of probably SQL, uh, uh, R, if, if for data visualization, Power BI, Tableau, you know, those things. So you actually need to, I, I think the younger ones need to, they, maybe they need more mentoring so that they will know that there are many opportunities for people who actually study math. It is not just for, opportunities are not just for people who study medicine, yes. but for people who study mathematics also. So I think if they can do their research also, and they will see that there are so many opportunities. In fact, although at, at some point I wanted to be a teacher, but I could still be a teacher if I wanted to ask a lecturer, but that would be an option, not yes. like, the only only available yeah. option for me yes option. yes and i totally understand parents always want to get whatever they put into your education back like the typical parents want yeah. to get yeah. an investment like they see you as an investment basically so yeah it's understandable that your parents want you to study something that is viable in the market but then not all parents know that something like mathematics is actually viable and mm -hmm. so if this information can be available to the younger ones, maybe they can make more informed decisions about the course of Thank study. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure you've highlighted so many opportunities across this value chain. I mean, this is a lot. On this note, we can end today's episode on the Women Series and the STEM series in general. I mean, it has been such an informative series all through, starting from the science to technology to engineering and mathematics. Thank you very much, Karen, for stopping by to share this very much needed information at this time i mean it was such a pleasure speaking with you uh, and i wish you all the me. very best in your studies and in poland and that brings us to the end of today's episode of the women's series if you've got questions or comments or you'd like to speak to any of our guests kindly reach out to me at ionide.ogudoyeapprociateedge.com and um, you want to read more on our news stories and watch our videos, log on to www.prosheng.com forward slash web TV. And until next time, until when we come your way again with another fresh episode, a fresh series, a brand new series, I remain Ayomide Ogutoyi. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.